Hey gang, Scott here. We're wrapping up the masking brush part of this mini series about masking tools in On One. And this video we'll talk about the custom brush. Now custom brushes is really just a shape of the masking brush. You can have a variety of shapes, custom shapes for your brushes. Uh, the controls all work the same way as the classic masking brush. So if you haven't watched the masking brush video, go check that out so you understand the basic controls for it. Then you can come back here in this video, I'll show you how to use a custom brush uh, and a couple of things that I, I find to be most valuable when using the custom brush. So uh, we'll, we'll just use a couple of examples in, in the, this video here to, to drive those things home. So, uh, so let's get into it here, custom brush. Let's add a local adjustment to this photo and we'll, we'll use this as an example here to, uh, to get into the custom brushes. So we have this shape here. You know, what is a custom brush first off? It's just a shape, right? The normal shape of the brush, the default shape, is just a circle. And there are a variety of different shapes that are provided in the tool, as well as things you can import yourself, like this On One watercolor brushes. This was a set of brushes that On One made available. I imported it into uh, my copy of uh, On One Effects. Uh, you can also see I've imported my logo, basically any image. Now they, I use a, I usually TIFF files for this. Render them as black and white, and you can bring them in as a custom brush. Custom brushes, you know, On One will also read uh, Adobe brush files, ABR files. So if you have those from Photoshop and you want them in On One, you can add them in. And you can do that in the Manage Extras area over in Brush Shapes, and that's where you can import different brush shapes. Uh, so now, what, what, what do I want to use these for? Um, I, I admit, I don't use custom brushes very often. Uh, I think some of the interesting ones, like watercolors, where they kind of look like uh, textures or, or, or skies, are, are cool for, for layer blending. But uh, we'll use just this bird here, because that makes sense for this particular photo. And let's just make the size of it very big, so we can see, here's what we have. And this is just the shape of the brush, right? This is what the brush is. It's this shape of a bird. Uh, we have all the same controls. We have feather, we have opacity, flow, angle becomes interesting for the bird. If I want it flying a little bit up as opposed to say down, you have that control with the angle. So angle is quite interesting for custom brushes uh, and not very interesting for the default shape of a circle. You're welcome to rotate the circle. It's gonna look the same. Uh, so then, great, fine, um, what happens when we brush? Well, I have a, a local adjustment here. I'm doing an exposure of negative one, so I'll just click once, and we see, all right, there's a, you know, a bird shape that's been uh, you know, darkening this area. So you know, depending on the type of work that you're doing, uh, you, you, you might find this useful. I think custom brushes are, are very helpful for those that are doing compositing work. You're doing layering work with, uh, with uh, you know, um, textures or, or, or any types of blendings where you want certain cutout shapes or um, just you know, uh, th that, you know, that compositing type of work, which admittedly I don't do very much of. Um, but uh, one or two examples, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do one example right now with this bird that I think um, is applicable to the landscape photographers among us. Uh, and then I want to talk about a couple of quirks with the uh, the custom brushes that you should be aware of. Not so much quirks, but just, just know, know if you see something weird happening, this might be it. Um, and, uh, and then uh, I want to show you about uh, using a custom logo too. Uh, but first, um, the, uh, the way that I would use this uh, custom brush with the local adjustment is instead of using these controls, I'll paint with color. And in this case, I'll choose pure black. You know, I like, or you know, maybe, maybe really close to black, like a, you know, deep charcoal. And then what I get is one click and I get a clean, you know, cookie cutter of, of a bird. Um, let's reset that and maybe make the, the size, you know, more meaningful for this photo. Like if there was, you know, one bird, flying through the scene. So I have that option to me using paint with color in the local adjustment. So uh, you know, that's one option here. 
uh, for things like that. You know, but but other shapes, like since the type of work that I do, you know, maybe something with with lightning, maybe you know, you increase the size. You know, I could I could I could in theory, you know, put some kind of crackle of lightning through the scene here. But what I notice is that the um, the overlays are are you know they, these are black and white files and some of them have gray and so th this one has like this this haloing type effect which I, I wouldn't want to use here perhaps if I were to let's reset that mask and if I were to use a more conducive color to lightning like white you know maybe that would look a little better but to me it still looks you know a little bit kitschy uh, but this is an example of what you can do with these things. Now, if I was creating like a composite and, um, you know, doing something like a movie poster where I might make the lightning more of a, you know, a, a glowing cyan or something like that, you know, maybe that would be okay. Or, or even orange or something you know, like, like that, you know, uh, orange lightning. And notice I'm changing the color because I'm changing the local adjustment. I, I actually can do that, you know, and just, you know, get all these, you know, wacky colors of lightning could be cool for compositing. For my photo, not so much. Uh, which brings me to another another point about if you're doing like the, the landscape type of work where you're doing this like silhouetted bird. Let's go back to our bird example here. Reset that into the shape and get that bird here. Um, actually, a little bit too big. There we go. One click and, oh, I'm still painting with, with yellow. Let's make that black. Okay. Uh, where it's very crisp, right? Notice I have the feather set to zero. Most of the time I don't have the feather set to zero when I'm masking. I'm usually using that uh, round default masking brush. If your feather is, is remotely high, it's going to look like very, you know, blotchy very quickly. So if you're doing silhouetted work, you know, adding a silhouette of a bird or, or, or uh, whatever into the scene, Get that feather down really, really low. You know, maybe, maybe a feather of one. If you need to have a little notion of softness in it, um, you know, and this is this is a very contrived example, right? But you know, maybe if there was, you know, a bird that was was coming out of that that area there, you know, maybe that's what it needs to be. And that's even um. A little bit too dark for this scene. The silhouette's too dark, right? So um, undo that. Maybe set that opacity down a little bit more, and that might be a little more believable for uh, for the scene. But this is the the types of operations you're doing with the custom brush. Silhouettes. Make sure that feather is really low. Now another thing that can be done with custom brushes is you know patterns or or, or you know just texture simulation. We saw like in the the, the area here, I have some uh, some things that come with the tool like nature. You've got these clouds or these sweeps or things like that. Um, you've got snow or there's like like dandelion spray. Okay, um, but there are some texture ones. There's watercolor ones. Let's say you're wanting to do something with say a texture, and I have no idea what this texture looks like. Let's make it big. Okay, I just like you know weird textury looking thing. Let's uh, let's turn off my my paint with color and we'll just keep it as a as a darker exposure so we can get a look at what that is. Okay, so it's this this weird textury kind of pattern um, and we can rotate it around to kind of mix in. If I was trying to simulate a texture here, or something like that. Okay, I've got that option for me. What I want to highlight is if I click and drag, it gets very staccato, splotchy things. So if you're working with one of these texture things, clicking and dragging to try and paint something or anything that has uh, a, a pretty uh, defined shape, I could do the same thing with that, that bird we had before. If I had reduced that, clicked and dragged, you know, I'd have this weird whatever going on here. Well, if you recall from the video, if you watched it on the uh, the flow versus the opacity in the gear menu, and I apologize again for this popping up in the left, it doesn't normally do that, in your tool to be right underneath that gear menu, 
manual spacing where you can change the speed at which the repeated strokes happen. Is it 15 or is it 82? Higher means more space between them, right? And then lower means less space, so it becomes even, even splotchier, right? So you have some controls there, which again, depending on the type of custom brushing you're doing, might or might not be helpful. Uh, another quirk with custom brushes, let's go back to our bird and let's turn back on paint with color. So we would normally be seeing a silhouetted bird there is if you were to turn on the perfect brush. Remember the perfect brush does edge detection and will only affect certain colors based on the color threshold and transition. Watch the perfect brush video. It'll explain all those details. But let's say if I put this bird over here and I'm clicking, I think the center is somewhere in the blue out there. If I click, I kind of get this. Um, it only matched certain blues. Hmm. If I take that color threshold and push it up um, and reset, let's click in that same area. Okay, I get more. It's behind the telephone pole now. I guess that would be making some sense here. But my point is, with the perfect brush turned on and custom brushing, uh, you do have the ability to protect certain color regions, but you may also get unusual results. The last example I want to show you is with a logo. Uh, this you, know, you, you stamp your watermark on your, on your photo. And so that's a, a good use for a custom brush. As you saw, at the very bottom, uh, I, I've imported you know, my logo in, in a variety of formats. I've got like a, a grayscale one, a, a, you know, a black one, and, and a white one here. Uh, basically, you need to have a black and white version of your, of your logo and then bring that in as, as a watermark. Let me pick that and let's get the angle back to zero. Okay, you can see my brush is like that. I'll reset here. Uh, this is an area that I like to use paint with color in a local adjustment. And since I'm going to put this down in the, the lower corner, I'll paint with, with white. But now I'm just hovering around and I've got my opacity. I probably want all the way up. Feather definitely all the way down. Click once and now I have my logo on my photo. And for any reason, uh, let's say that I, I wanted to change its color. You know, I can do that, right? You know, I have that full control over the, the color of the logo by virtue of paint with color. That color change, that's not the custom brush doing that. That's the local adjustment doing that when you paint with color. That's a good combination for anybody looking for a quick way to add a watermark to your photo. And if you recall from the masking brush video, I talked about styles. This might be a spot where I'd save a style, right? Um, for me, maybe the size of my logo should be a little smaller. You know, maybe something like 800. I'm not that much of a, an ostentatious kind of guy. Let's reset that. Oh, I left my perfect brush on, which probably left a little artifacting there. And now that I have a good size for my logo, opacity, flow, I can go to the style menu, save a new style, and I can just call it my watermark. If I could spell watermark, there we go. All right, and then I have that available to me. The next time I open up a brush, I can just pop open here, grab, my watermark, drop it on my photo, and I'm done. So those are custom brushes in On One's masking brush tool. Uh, your local adjustment brush, the masking brush, the controls work the same way. You have custom brushes there. My personal favorite use for it is to couple a custom brush with a local adjustment with paint with color and be able to do silhouetted work uh, for you know just little accents, you know, birds or maybe a tree in the distance as well as your own watermark if you like to watermark your photos. But if you're doing compositing work, take a look at some of the, uh, the abilities of custom brushes to uh, give you, you know, cut out shapes, to, uh, to punch down into other layers, things like that. Uh, there are some interesting use cases. As a landscape photographer, these are the ones I've used. And hopefully the, the quirks that I've shown you where 
the uh, the 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 was the perfect brush. If that's being on, you might see interesting artifacting, or changing the manual spacing of the brush and how that can affect you know, broader strokes of a, a given custom brush. Hopefully that will help you out if you're doing compositing work. And with that, I'll uh, conclude the video. If you got questions, go ahead and drop them below. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.